I'm here to talk about something that when I learned about it, it completely changed the way that I write React code. In fact, it, it kind of completely changed the way that I write JavaScript, period. And for me, there's no going back. And that topic is JavaScript type checkers. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, right? It's super exciting. Now, I, I do hope to win you over, though. By the end of this talk, I hope that you can see how adopting types in your code can help you to code faster, can help you to move with more confidence, and can help you to ultimately write more reliable software. So some of you are still like, Steve, what are you talking about? What does a type checker do? Um, at its core, writing a flow type is basically like this. You start with some untyped code. Here's a function, hello function. It takes a name argument. And then it spits out some. Uh, 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 it spits out a div, where you just take the name and you write hello name into the div. So the process of adding types to this code is a process of describing the inputs to this function and the outputs of this function in terms of what they should look like. So in this case, all I'm saying is I'm saying, hey, there's this hello function that takes a name argument, and name is a string. It's got to be a string. And then when this function finishes running, it's got to output, it's got to return an HTML div. What the type checker does is it takes, first of all, it takes a look to make sure the function is internally consistent, period. It's like, are you using name the way you would use a string? And whatever you return, is it definitely an HTML div? But more importantly, what a type checker is going to do is it's going to take a look at the whole rest of your program, and it's going to take a look at particularly the people who call this hello function. And it's going to be like, whoa, hold on. When you called hello, did you pass it a string? And when you got the return value back, did you use it the way that a div should be used? And that's basically the whole thing. That's what a type checker helps you do. So you do a little bit of work. The type checker checks to see if your program ostensibly is going gonna, is gonna to work correctly. So. You can use whatever type checker you want. You can use Microsoft's TypeScript. You can jump all the way to the future and use some like compiled to JavaScript language like Reason that has types built in from you know, the front page to the back page. Today, I'm going to take an existing JavaScript application, and I'm going to incrementally improve it with flow types. Uh, flow is the name of Facebook's uh, JavaScript type checker. You can look it up at flow.org. And I'm going to hit five topics. I'm going, to, I'm going to spend a day on each one. The first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the first four things, Flow kind of gives you for free. And then the fifth is when we're going to actually have to put in a little work. So the first thing Flow gives you for free is a bunch of built-in types. Flow ships with type definitions for common APIs that you use like React or the Fetch API or the document object model uh, if you're a web programmer. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to make use of a technique called type refinement. So this is a process where an unknown value flows into your application. Maybe someone you know, posted to your web API. And through type refinement, we're going to make a bunch of assertions about what we hope that input is so that whatever falls out the bottom is a strongly typed value that can flow through the rest of your program. The whole time we're doing this, we're going to take advantage of editor integration. I'm using uh, the new Clyde editor today, and I have Flow hooked into it. So Flow is going to allow me to like, auto-complete functions and, and the method signatures of those functions. And also, I'm going to be able to use my mouse and hover over variables and see what type they are or what type Flow thinks they are. Now finally, uh, not all code that we use is code that we wrote in particular. This application is going to be built on the open source Express web server. Um, so we don't want to write types for that. We want other people to do that for us, and then we'll just download them. So we're going to download library definitions for Express so that we can use them in our program too. And then finally, we're going to have to put in some work, and we're going to actually have to describe how the application is supposed to work um, and annotate the types as we go. So. This is now a role play. You, me, we're all in this together now. We're all in a company. And we make this uh, 
this like commenting app. You can use it to comment on like a blog post or a, a news article or something like that. And you can write comments and you can write replies. Now the scenario is this. This app is busted right now. It broke in the last deploy. We had to roll it back. And if I'm being honest, this, this app really hasn't worked reliably for weeks. People have been filing bugs. They're like, oh, my comment doesn't post. Or, oh, my comments aren't updating in real time. Or, uh, you know, oh, I made a comment, but it went on the wrong thread. The C-suite is like super embarrassed. They're trying to rebuild some trust in the product. And they have hired, they've, they've put us in charge of fixing this thing and making sure that this never happens again. So what do you say? Are you with me? <laughs> OK. Let's time box this activity. Uh, let's spend like 30 minutes and see if we can go from, from zero to flow and fix this thing. We're going we're gonna to start turning on uh, flow for this project, and we're going to see how many bugs we can find. All right. So keep count. See how many bugs we fix by the end of this. All right. Let me give you a tour of, of the application. So this application is made up of uh, these four React components and a couple of helpers that we use to fetch some data. And then there's a server component to it, and then the entry point. So we're going we're gonna to look from the back of this application to the front, and we're going to start turning on flow for one file at a time and see if it finds any bugs for us. All right, so let's start at the entry point. Here's a pretty common thing if you use, uh, if you build React on the web. Um, we're finding some, some div on the page with the ID root, and we're mounting our React app into it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take advantage of just built-in types that Flow knows about already, like React and, and the document object model. So I'm going to turn on Flow for this file. The way you do that is by just writing a comment at the top, at Flow. And then I'm going to push Save. And Flow says it's found our first error. Let's go take a look at it. Flow says, hey, you can't call React DOM render with mount point bound to a container because null is incompatible with an element. So what it's telling us here is that mount point at this point in the code, Flow thinks it could be an HTML element, yeah, but it could also be null. And it knows that because take a look at this. It knows that get element by ID is a method that takes in a string, the ID you want to find, and then it returns an HTML element or a null. And that's true, right? I mean, what if that div just didn't exist on the page? This would return a null, and then React would try to mount something into null, and then boom, the app doesn't work. So we're going to use that technique I mentioned called type refinement. We're going to say, we have a mount point here that could be null, could be an HTML element. But what we want is definitely an HTML element. So here's how type refinement works. I'm going to use a, a, a utility uh, function called invariant. And what invariant lets us do is it lets us write some conditions that have to be true for us to continue on to the next line. If they're not true, the program will just throw. So in this case, I want to say, hey, by this point in the code, mount point had better be non-null. Otherwise, you know, I could not find the div with id root. Now, if I push save, the flow error goes away. And the reason is because on line 11 here, mount point could be an HTML element or a null. But on line 13, flow knows, because of this refinement that I've written on line 12, no, it's definitely got to be an HTML element for us to have reached this line of code. And then we're good. All right, let's keep going. Let's go back to the server. So here we have a server that's written using the web framework Express. It's got three parts. We have a sort of an authentication part where we look in the cookies and we go like, hey, is this person logged in? Do I have a cookie for them? If not, we like make up a name for them based on a random cat name. And that's that. The second part of this code is the comments URL, right? If you hit slash comments, we just want to give up all the comments in JSON format. 
Then the third part of it is this add endpoint. When you hit add and you submit a comment to the server, we want to pull it out of the body. We want to find which thread to append it to. And then we want to create the new comment and stick it into the database. So that's the server in a nutshell. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to import a library definition for Express, because I don't want to write it. So I'm going to run a command line utility. This is NPX. It's an executor that comes with NPM that lets you run NPM modules. We're going to use the flow typed utility. Uh, and we're going to install a type definition for Express. I looked it up. It already exists. I think I'm using uh, Express version 4.16 or something like that. So we run that, and it's going to go to NPM and, and download that type definition. In the meantime, I'm going to turn on flow for this file. And then when it downloads, I'm going to push save and see what we got. All right, so it's installed the library definition for Express. I'm turning on flow for this file, and we'll see what we got. All right, flow found our first error in this file. Let's see what it is. It says, hey, you can't call res set cookie because set cookie is missing in Express response. So because we imported that Express definition, uh, Flow now knows that this res thing is the Express response object. And so it's saying that set cookie is not, it's not a property on that object. And that's true, isn't it? Let's use the autocomplete and, uh, and see what is. So uh, we've got add trailers, app, append, attachment, clear cookie. Yeah, so there's the bug, right? It's not set cookie. The method is called cookie. So Flo found this typo for us. I can rename that from set cookie to cookie and push save. Error gone. All right. So up until this point, Flo's been giving us all this stuff mostly for free. Now it's time for us to start doing some work and start actually describing what does it mean to be an author, what does it mean to be a comment. So let's do it. Here's how you define your own flow type. I'm going to say, I'm going to make up this author type. Author is an object that contains some properties. In particular, an author is made up of an ID and a name. So I'm going to define an ID as a number and a name is a string. So far, so good. Here's where we store the authors. We store the authors in this map, and the map is a map from the IDs to the authors. The IDs are numbers, and the values in this map are these things, these author things that I made up, that are made up of an object of ID and name. OK, that takes care of what an author is and how we store it in this server, a very sophisticated database, I know. I know. Anyone using it? It's called JavaScript objects. It's all the hottest. It's the rage. OK. So what's in a comment? I'm going to create a comment type. A comment is made up of these things, right? A comment has an author, an ID, and some text. So let's do it. A comment has an author, which is one of those author things, has an ID, which is a number, and then it has some text, which is a string. Here's the sophisticated database for comments. It's a flat array. I'm going to say comments is made up of an array of these comment things. That's how you tell Flow uh, this thing on the right-hand side is an array where each one of the values in the array conforms to the comment type we described. Down here, here's an index where we index comments by their ID, similar to authors. The, the keys are IDs, which are numbers. And then the, uh, the values are these comment things. OK. So there I've described what authors are, what comments are, and how they're stored. Now, down here in my editor, Flo tells me that this file right now is 71% covered with types. That uh, doesn't give me like a ton of confidence. so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click this, and Flow is going to show me all of the lines that aren't covered by types yet. Everything that's underlined in blue, Flow doesn't know about. 
So some of this stuff doesn't bother me. Like, I'm not really worried about cookie parser. I, I'm going to assume that that's working correctly. But some of this other stuff bothers me. This is a common, common uh, pattern in Express, right? Where you take the Express request and you just stick more stuff on it, custom stuff. Here we're taking the author that we, that we logged in and we're sticking them onto the request so that we can use them later on to figure out who wrote a comment. Um, but right now, this request object is totally untyped. So I'm I, wanna, I wanna create a type for our custom request. So what does a request to our app look like? I'm gonna call it custom request. And yeah, it's made up of an author that we're gonna stick in there. But I also want all of the default express request stuff in there too, not just the stuff that I made up. So I'm going to show you a different kind of import statement. Instead of importing code, here I'm going to import a type. So I downloaded the express library definition. And into this file, I'm going to import the request type in here. I cheated. I looked this up beforehand. It's called dollar sign $request. That's how they wrote it. And I'm going to say that my custom request is the combination of Express's request intersected with the stuff that I just made up. And then wherever request appears, I'm going to annotate it to say, hey, request at this point in the code, this is this custom request thing. So I'm going to replace this everywhere in the code and say, this is one of my custom request things. All right. And now, Flow says it's found an error with the way that I'm storing these authors. So let's take a look at what it is. It says, a string is incompatible with a number here. And that's right, because author ID was supposed to be a number, but at this point in the code, it looks like uh, Flow thinks it's a string. So I follow it back up, and I notice, yeah, that's why it's a string. We're trying to pull it straight out of the cookies. And cookies are always strings. So if I expected a number here at this point in the code, I would have to take that string that comes out of the cookie, and I would have to parse it as an integer. So now if I hover over author ID, Flow knows it's definitely a number, and the type error went away. All right, more type errors in this file. Here's the code where we make a new comment. People can post new comments to the server. So the way that that works is people post up what comment they're replying to, if any, and what the text of the comment is. But they post it through this, this body thing, right? The body of the request. But we have no idea at the time that this comes into our application what that is. Flow tells us this is of mixed type, which is just another way of saying, I have no idea what this is. So here we're going to use that technique of type refinement to make sure that body is in the format that we need it to be in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the invariant module. And then I'm going to get to work refining this req.body type. Now, forgive me for the autocomplete, but you don't want to watch me type all this stuff. The first thing that we're going to say is there has to be one. If you want to make a comment, you've got to submit something to the server. The second thing we're going to say is the parent comment ID has to be explicitly null, or it's got to be a number. We have to know what comment you're replying to, or we have to know that you're not replying to a comment at all, that it's a top-level comment. And then the third thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, you have to have submitted some text, and it's got to be a string. So now, if we push save, these type errors go away. And auto, uh, the hover tells us that Flow now knows if we got through this, you know, if we, if we ran this gauntlet of invariants and we managed to get down to line 76, that parent comment is definitely null or a number. And text is definitely a string at this point in the code. All right. One more error left in this server file. What do we got? It says, you can't get parent comment replies in here because the property replies is missing in the comment type. 
And that's true, isn't it? I, I totally missed that part. Comments have replies, and replies are themselves an array of these comment things. And you can see when you define a type, a type can refer to itself, which is exactly what you'd want. So now pushing save, like whack-a-mole, we've pushed the type errors further down the program. Right now it's saying, hey, you can't push onto this array of, of uh, the thread to append to because replies is missing in the object on line 86. If I click to 86, it jumps me there, and I see, yeah, there's another bug in this code, right? When we create new comments, we have to initialize the replies uh, to an empty array. Otherwise, you can't push on to nothing. You can't push on to undefined. All right, I've saved. All the type errors are gone. And code coverage in this file is up to a, a whopping 97%. So now I feel I have the confidence to, to keep going. So let's go into the React code. Yeah? All right. Boring server code over. Let's head to the React code. First step, turn on flow in this file. Right away, flow tells me, hey, you can't use react.component with, with less than one type argument. That's a fact. The way that flow works with React is you have to give it a type argument. You have to tell it what the type of the props and the state of your component are. This is a React-specific concept. What's the type of the props going into this component, and what's the internal state of it? Now, my app doesn't take any props, so I'm just going to type those as empty, the keyword empty. But it does have some state in here, right? It keeps a list of comments. So I'm going to say, inside state, we have an array of these comment things. And it would be really nice if I could reuse that type that I just wrote on the server. And of course you can. You can use it. You can use it through imports. I'm going to import that comment type from the server file. And the only way that's going to work is if I go to the server file, find the comment type, and export it. Cool, so now we get we get type sharing between the client and the server. As long as the client and the server are both written in JavaScript, you can do this. All right. Now Flow's found an error in app.js. Let's go see. It says, hey, you can't call set timeout with 300 bound to the callback argument, because a number isn't a function. And you can't call set timeout with perform fetch bound to the millisecond argument, because a function isn't a number. And that's true, right? Classic mistake. Someone uh, wrote these backwards, right? You have to write, when you write a set timeout, it's the function first, and then the delay time second. So maybe this is why our comments weren't updating in real time. All right, so we're clear of flow errors in this file. Let's move on to the next component. Uh, let's go to the comment thread component. So same story. Let's turn on flow in this file, and let's tell flow what the type of the props are for a comment thread. So what do we have? Uh, we have this.props.comment, and this.props.depth, and it looks like that's it. So a comment is one of these comment things, and depth is a number that refers to whether we're like a top level comment or a reply. I'm going to import the comment type from the server file. And let's see if Flo finds any bugs in this. OK, first bug it found. It says, you can't create a comment thread element because comment is missing in prompts. And here's the bug, right? Someone wrote this, they had a reply, they were rendering replies, and instead of passing the reply as the comment prop, they just made a typo and they wrote, oh, it's the reply prop, when it should be the comment prop. All right, bug gone. 
Now, it looks like there's no more type errors in this file, but Flow is reporting that we have a type error now somewhere else in our program. This is the part where Flow is continually checking the whole program to see if everybody is using everything correctly. So let's click on it to go to it. So this took us back to app.js, and let's see what the deal is. It says, hey, you can't create a common thread element here because a string is incompatible with a number in property depth. And yeah, taking a look at it, there's the bug, right? Another classic React mistake. You meant to pass a number as a prop, but instead you passed the string zero, when almost certainly what you meant to do was pass the value zero. We push save, type error gone, and we can keep going. All right, let's hop into this comment body component. Same deal. Turn on flow for this file. Tell flow what uh, the type of the props are for this. Looks like we have this.props.author and this.props.text. All right, so this component takes an author and some text, which is a string. And I'm going to import author from the server. And in order to be able to do that, I need to go back to the server, find the author type, and make sure that it's exported. All right. So Flow found an error in this file. It says, you can't coerce author to a string because author shouldn't be coerced. Yeah, I agree with that. So look what's going on here. Someone wrote, uh, you know, they wanted this alt attribute to be a string that says a photo of blank, presumably someone's name. But they wrote this.props.author. And author isn't a name or, or a string. Author is this object which is made up of an ID and a name property. So almost certainly what they meant to do here was to write uh, this.props.author.name. And now Flow knows a string is easily uh, uh, interpolatable with a string. So, so we're good. All right, let's back out. We got one more React component to go. The comment form. This is what you use to submit comments. So hopping into comment form, turn on flow, tell flow what the type of the props and the state of this component are. The props of this component are what? I have this.props.parent comment ID and this.props.placeholder. That determines whether it says write a comment or write a reply. So those two things, parent comment ID is a number, and placeholder is a string. But hold on. Parent comment ID is actually what you call a nullable number. It could be null, so I'm going to write a question mark that says parent comment ID could be null, or it could be a number. And then I'm going to do something a little bit different for placeholder. I'm going to put the question mark over here. And when you put the question mark on the key side, what that is saying is it's saying, yeah, you can supply a placeholder prop, but you can also leave it out. But if you supply it, it better be a string. So that's two different ways of, uh, this is basic optional, optionality, and this is nullability. OK, let's keep going. Uh, let's do the state type. So state, we hold on to the comment text. I guess this is what the user is typing at any given point in time. And comment text is a string. All right, type errors. Let's do it. So first of all, Flow is just complaining that we didn't write any annotations for the handle change, or I guess the handle submit method. Um, and it feels kind of uncomfortable about that. I agree. I feel uncomfortable about it too. So, so let's write some. So this is React code, right? So uh, the type of uh, the the event that gets passed to a handler is a synthetic 
um, synthetic event, right? This one's a synthetic input event on a uh, HTML input element. And this one down here, handle submit, that's a synthetic event on an HTML form element. All right, now we have real bugs. First bug, you can't call e.stop because property stops missing in synthetic event. And that's true, isn't it? I mean, what is this? jQuery? No, the property is not called stop. It's called prevent default. All right, cool. Next error. You can't call set state because null is incompatible with a string in the property comment text. So you see what people were trying to do here. They were trying to say, after you submit a comment, blank out the comment text, which is fine. But we, we already said that comment text has to be a string. It can't be null. So almost certainly what they meant to do here was just to blank it out, make it the empty string. One last error in this file. You can't call handle change because function requires another argument. Oh yeah, this is another one of those classic React typos, right? You meant to pass a handle change function as the on change property, but what you did instead was you put braces and you called the handle change function in place, right? So Flo already knew that something was up with this. Um, the correction is just, no, no, we don't want to call handle change in place. We want to pass it as the on change prop. All right, we push save, and we're clear of errors in this file. But it looks like we have errors somewhere else in the program. Let's go to them now. It looks like this revealed errors in comment thread.js, and it says, you can't create a comment form element because the property parent comment ID is missing in the props, but it exists in the props type. Another classic React error, right? This is, this is the classic capital I lowercase d error, when really what you meant to write was capital I capital D, right? That's the name of the prop, not I lowercase d. And that's probably the super nasty bug where people were submitting comments and they were getting made to the wrong thread. Awkward. <laughs> all right. So that's it. We've added types to all the React components. Let's go down to the server, uh, the, the fetchers. I'm going to start with the lowest level one. So this is the fetch JSON utility. I'm going to turn on flow. And right away, flow is going to complain hey, can you please make some annotations for these arguments? That's reasonable. Fetch takes an endpoint from the server that we want to fetch from. That's going to be a string. And it takes some params that we want to post to the server. Now, this one's a little harder. This is hard to type. Because for any given endpoint, the params could be different, right? Some endpoints might take no params. Some endpoints might take these params. Some endpoints might take different ones. So I'm going to make a best effort here. I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say, all right, we might take params or we might not. So that's what the question mark's for. But if we do take params, at least, then I'm going to write the open object. At least they got to be an object. I'm not going to say what keys and values they contain, but at least make it null or an object. And hopefully that's going to be good enough for now. All right. I push save, and now we have our first legitimate error. The error is, now this one's a little bit more inscrutable. It doesn't like something about what we uh, set for the body key. So here I'm trying to like post some JSON to the server, and I'm trying to post you know, this stuff to the server. So Flo says, no, 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 no. The thing that you've supplied for body, you know, it's incompatible with URL search params and form data and blob and array buffer. It's incompatible with all these types. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, I don't really know what's going on here. I, I want to go right to the definition for what body is supposed to be to try and dig into this a bit more. So I'm going to click and I'm going to go right to the built-in type. So here's the type that's shipped with flow that says what the body uh, type should be. 
And it says that, yeah, it can be, you know, all of these things, or it can be a string. And that's my clue. My clue is, I see what's going on here. I'm trying to post JSON to the server, but what did I do? I didn't post JSON to the server. I tried to, like, stick this object thing here. What I really needed to do was I needed to JSON stringify it first, stringify, so that I'm actually posting JSON text to the server. And now flow error goes away. All right, another bug caught. Let's go one level higher. So this is the module that actually fetches the comment threads. I'm going to turn on flow for this file. And at the very least, I'm going to say, like, when you hit the server and you get a response, what do we expect the response to look like? So this is a fetcher. It returns a promise, right? It returns a promise for an array of these comment things. And I'm going to import the comment type now. All right. So no errors in this file, but it looks like Flow found an error somewhere else in the program. So let's go to it. All the way back into app.js, Flow says, hey, you can't call set state because a promise is incompatible with an array. So right here, if I hover over it, Flow says comments at that point in the code is a promise for an array of comments, which is not at all what I want it to be. I want it to be just an array of comments. And this is, again, like another classic error when you're using async await is to have an async function and to forget to await it. You don't want the promise for the future value. You want the actual value. So if I push save, now Flow knows that's not a promise for some comments. That's an actual array of comments at this point. And we fixed another bug. This is probably also a reason why uh, comments weren't updating in real time. OK, we're on the home stretch. There's one more file. And that's the one where we make comments. So this is the submit comment helper. Turn flow on for this file. And I know you're all super disappointed that this is the last annotation we have to add. Uh, but you know, it's, it's been real. Let's, uh, text is a string here. Parent comment ID, remember, can be null or it can be a number. And now Flow's found a bug in this file. It says, you can't call fetch JSON with that JSON stringify thing bound to the params argument because a string is not an object. And look at what's happened here. This is probably someone was trying to hack around the old bug where comments weren't submitting properly. And they were like, ah, oh, I know. You're supposed to stringify this params object, right? But they didn't stringify it down at the like, core low-level helper. They stringified it this higher level up. So when we fixed the lower-level helper, we actually ended up breaking this, right? Like, who, who's ever done that before? It happens all the time, right, where you think you're, you're fixing something and it ends up in a regression. Well, Flow protected us here, and it was like, no, 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 you told me this thing has to be an object. So now that we're stringifying in the correct place, we can take that out, and we're good. No more Flow errors. <sighs> All right. I'm tired. <laughs> take a deep breath. That was a lot of typing and not a lot of running the program. What do you think? Do you think we fixed anything? Yeah. Did, did you dare me to run it? Yeah. All right, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see, uh, let's see if, if uh, you know, as they say in the biz, if it type checks, it runs. <laughs> so I don't know. Let's see. Uh, we're we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to open a terminal, and I'm going to start the, the server part of it. I'm going to open another terminal, and I'm going to start the client part of it. 
Then I'm gonna I'm gonna log in as a couple different people. Load up the app, and let's see what happens. Hello? Is there anyone there? Hey, it updated. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, cool. Let's get some pizza. All right. What we've done here together is we've gone from zero to flow in 30 minutes. We've turned on a type checker on our existing code base to find bugs, to fix them, without ever writing one single console log statement. <laughs> we never dropped a debugger or a breakpoint into our application, and we didn't even run it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking with me through that. I hope I've inspired you to at least give this a shot in your own code bases. Thanks for coming. It's been a pleasure. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have at any time. Thanks, guys.